Hi there folks, welcome to Double R TV's live coverage of the Australasian Super Skips. Ignore the sim racers age or I forgot to update the overlays from last night. But we're here at Norellan in New South Wales at Oran Park for round 11 of the Super Skips. And as you can see at the moment folks, they are out there on their warm up laps and we'll be going into qualifying very shortly. But before we do... Let's have a look at who's your commentary team tonight. It's myself and it's Kevin Henderson. Welcome, Kevin. It's going to be another great night of Skippy Racing here. Yeah, good evening, Bernie. Evening, race fans. Yeah, great little track, this one. Very hard on drivers, very hard on cars. And a lot of fond memories from me as a young fellow. I used to come out here with the family and watch the races of a weekend. Yeah, me too. We used to travel up from Canberra and uh, watch the old... Uh, touring cars in those days before the v8 supercars and uh it was always a great family day out that's for sure and i think i've even uh, raced on the kart track there in my uh my karting days ah oh, good for you buddy that's yeah very nice yeah, it's a it's a uh, very hard little track yeah great fun to drive on you you never get a moment's peace and the races fly by but uh, yeah very technical little track and bound to be plenty of action tonight with i think we've got something like 27 entries on, on getting around here so it's going to be fast and furious yeah well the other night we're at uh, sonoma for the v8 supercars and that track reminds me quite a lot of oran park uh, of course oran park isn't quite as hilly but it's definitely uh as challenging not a lot of room to have a, a rest apart from the main straight down here and then the rest of the time the guys are pretty much uh pretty busy dealing with the corners the undulations the uh all the things that uh, Oran Park throws up at a driver. Yeah, you're not wrong there, Bernie. You don't even get much of a rest on the straight because all the way down the straight you're thinking, turn two, turn two. How does that work again? Yeah, exactly right. Turn turn uh, one and two, it's, it's a bit like a double apex, isn't it, when you come in? You sort of come in, sweep to the inside, onto the brakes in a straight line, and then uh, you're into the corner. Yeah, that's a theory, Bernie. It's, uh, <laughs> however, it's... Uh, very easy to get it wrong through there, it just uh, unbalances the car so easily, it's so hard on the brakes and you just dig out those wheels, you know, as you say, if you're not pointing straight, it's hello, the back in front of the front, that's never a good thing. Yes. And of course with this many cars on the track, if someone goes, the people behind are going to be diving left and right. Yeah, exactly right. And if we look at how many cars we've got out there, we've got 29 joining us tonight. And uh, because of that, and because it's Oran Park, the guys are going to get four laps uh, qualifying, but it's going to be lone qualifying tonight. So uh, the guys won't get interference. They'll be qualifying where they can put those cars on the grid. And uh, it'll also cut out, not that there'll be a lot of it, but uh, slipstreaming down that main straight. Yeah, you're right there, Bernie. It, uh, yeah, it would have been pretty hectic qualifying here with 29 cars. I think the single car qualifying is the way to go here. Um, if you do get a chance to have a look at the front of Timu's car, it's got quite a strange picture of a man with wings for ears on the front of it that I found quite amusing earlier. Okay, he does too. He's got... Uh, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> no, I'm not sure what it is either, Bernie. Yeah, last time he had a big shark tooth on the front with a big smiley face. This time he's decided he's going to go with a uh, man's face with wings on it. Maybe it's his face and he, he reckons he's going to fly tonight. Maybe. Maybe it's his, um, his guardian angel bird. Yeah, possibly. But uh, before uh, qualifying gets started, let's have a look at the weight race weather. So they've got uh, four laps qualifying tonight. A total length of this track, 2.6 kilometres. It's partly cloudy out there. Late afternoon, and uh, which always makes these cars pop. 39 degrees Celsius out there, 102 degrees Fahrenheit, depending where you're joining us from. So it's, uh, it's quite a hot day out there. But... Uh, I don't know, you tell us, uh, Kevin, on a hot day like this, how does it affect uh, the handling of the skip barber? Yeah, Bernie, it does tend to make them a little bit slippery, uh, especially around here. Uh, I've got slightly different info to you on, on that, but uh, never mind, we'll go with what you've got. <laughs> yeah, it does It does make them a little slippery, especially some of these corners are a little bit off camber, and, uh, and you're really throwing the car in there. Uh, it's a shame... We don't have a grippier track, uh, it's a lot more fun on a grippier track, but uh, 
We'll see how they go. The boys are going to have their work cut out for them, that's for sure. Yeah. Some will be starting to put in their first uh, qualifying lap shortly. Yeah, well, they're out there now doing it. We've got uh, Ryan Walker on the screen at the moment. He's from the UK and I uh, uh, club. So we'll bring up his qualifying lap now because he'll be the first one going across. Well, actually, he's not started his uh, quali lap yet. Tim Gaukridger set a time of a 1.13.538. So uh, that's the time for the rest of them to beat. And as you can see, they're starting to come through now on the uh, timing board. So Tim Gaukridger takes provisional pole. Ian Bevan right behind him. Now Tim Hendrickson's jumping up. Huck on Grebstad sitting in fourth and uh, running out your top five is Ashley Work. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good times for the first lap through here. 13 5 by Timothy. He's um, there. Yeah, it certainly is. We'll see what Mr. McKellar's doing. He's coming around now. He, he was in practice, I think, he's about seventh fastest. So we'll see as he comes across the start finish line. He did a 114.201, brings him into seventh, eighth position because Ashley Work just pushed him down. Russell Clark's also jumped up into sixth position. Yeah, you're going to need to be in the 13th to be competitive here by the looks of things, Bernie. They're, um, seen anyone improve on Timothy's time yet? Yeah, well, we're uh, looking at Timu Vascalampi now as he's coming through the back section of the circuit. He's already done 53 seconds as he comes up. I don't know what you call this, the, the, the final blind dip, I guess you could call it, into the final corner now. 103. It's got 10 seconds to get there, and uh, we'll see what sort of a time he does on his second flying lap. He's coming across now, 113.487, that puts him into fourth position, so uh, that's moving him up, so that's a good time. Actually, he's jumped up now to pole position with a T of 113.504, pushing Tim Gaukridger down one. There's not a lot in it, but uh, that's why he's on this track. It's, you know, there's, a, there's not a lot of variation in how to get around here fast, so um, it's just a case of doing what has to be done, doing it right. Um, my 13 fives, that's probably going to be, you know, I doubt I'll get much quicker than that. Yeah, well, here comes Tim Gaukridger now. He did a third, 13 five, three, eight, and uh, that, well, 13 three, one, one, so he's yeah. jumped up to pole. It takes a while for the telemetry folks for it to come up, but uh, uh, yeah, he's in pole, Timu's in second. I guess now, uh, Jared Marks sitting in third, what can he bring to the table? Yeah, Ian Bevan's just uh, jumped up a little bit. Uh, Russell jumped up and then jumped back down again. <laughs> it's all going on. I, I can't keep up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, cars, not enough time. Exactly it's, right. It's hectic, hectic. Certainly is Alex uh, McCallum now. He's, uh, he's coming across to complete his lap shortly, down to ninth. Can he improve, uh, Kevin? What do you think? I'm not sure. I'm just watching Russell now as he's coming onto the final straight. Oh, he's very close to the wall there. What's Russell got for us? He's just about to cross the line now and proved it all. So, no, he's still there on the 13 8. Luke's jumped up the second there, Bernie. The 13 4 dead. Fantastic. So your top five at the moment, folks. Tim Gaukridger, provisional pole. Luke Whitten in the second position. Timu sitting down there in third. Fourth, Jared Marks. Fifth is Ian Bevan. And uh, Hakon is just sitting outside the top five at the moment. And he's coming across now to complete another lap here. And uh, this will be his third lap. So we'll see if he can get into the top five. I don't think he will. He's too slow. Yeah, that's about slow at all, Bernie, but I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. There are standing times I'm surprised by Tim Hendricks. He's, uh, he's struggled here this week. He seems to have put it together for tonight. Yeah, he certainly has, and we can see now Russell Clark coming across again, which means Alex McCalla, where is he? Actually, they're both exactly the same on the track. Of course, they can't see each other, but uh, they're pretty much lapping at the exact same time. So... Uh, we should get updates on both of them very quickly. No, Alex has pulled out. Meanwhile, Luke's jumped to the top of the pops with a 13.202. 
And the team is just behind him, the 13 2 8 2. So there's not much in it at the front. They're managing to find a tenth here and there as the tyres come up to temperature. And uh, there can only possibly only probably be another lap left, I'd imagine. Yeah, a lot of the guys are actually pulled into the pits now and um, having a look for Ryan Walker. He's coming through. He's completed three laps. So this should be his fourth. And uh, we'll see if he can improve. He's sitting down there in tenth at the moment. And uh, his target of 113.827 if he wants to bump off Alex. And he's coming across the line now. And he did a 113. 938 I think it was yeah I've just noticed Sam Catacazinus is late to the party he's only got one lap in and I uh, don't know if you'll get the four of them he's got a couple of minutes to see how he goes but uh, he hasn't even posted a time yet yeah I noticed that he was very late coming into the session we'll keep an eye on him though because he does have a lot of pace here tonight he was sitting around uh, sixth position in practice so if you can get a lap in uh, it's going to be very close he should get this lap in if this is his flying lap uh, otherwise he may run out of time he, he may well do and you're not wrong Bernie he does have some pace here I was in a race with uh, Sam earlier in the week and uh, yeah he was going plenty quick then Certainly, uh, he's definitely been showing the pace uh, last week, that's for sure. We were watching him over at VIR, uh, having a great battle with Tim Hendrickson there. And uh, it was great to see him back out on the track. Now, as far as the race tonight goes, folks, it's 34 laps. Here it goes, Sam Katakazinos. What did he do? A 114.016 puts him into 13th, so that's better than down the back. But... Yeah, 34 laps here tonight, folks. One mandatory stop. They won't t do tyres. They'll put in a splash and dash, absolute minimum, to the point where we've seen some guys run out of fuel on the last lap. And uh, it's going to be a very interesting race. Of course, this series has one more round to go, which will be covered on the Top Split TV, the final round, but this will be our final round of Double R TV for this season, and it's been an absolute pleasure uh, bringing this series uh, to the viewers, Kevin. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I've had the ball, Bernie. It's sort of my first really, more or less, full-time stint commentating. I must admit I've learned a lot. I see Sam still out there. I don't know if he's got time, but he's... Uh Looks like, yep, he's gone. Didn't make it. No, he did not. He certainly did not. But let's See? have a, let's go through the grid very quickly. What do you reckon? Yeah, go for it, Bernie, and just give me the nod, and I'll pick it up when you leave off. Okay, so Luke Whitten, he's going to start from pole position tonight. Keep an eye on Team Move Ascalampi out of second. In your second row, we have Tim Gaukrucha next to Jared Marks in fourth position. Tim Hendrickson, he's going to start out of fifth with Mick Watson from the UK in sixth position. Out of seven tonight will be Ian Bevan, followed by Hakon Grebstad. Then we have Russell Clark in ninth and Alex McCullough. He will start out of tenth. Ryan Walker, he will start in eleventh. And Seymour Harding, that rounds out your top twelve. In 13th, we've got Sam with only one qualifying lap. Very good effort there, Sam. Uh, Roman Jarka, I thought Roman might have done better. He's been very quick. Actually worked... Well, about 14th. <laughs> Simon D. Chambers, Peter Goodwin. Uh, Rob James Harris. John Schultz is a new name for me. Les Peck. Joseph Falcom, uh, Matter, And then we have Mark Jeffrey, Rick Davis. Out of 24th will be Paul Nichols, and then 25th, Nathan Kong, followed by Matthew Hill in 26th. Brian Munger, he will start out of 27th tonight with Darren Lesu out of 28th. Out of 29th is Anthony Moore, and then out of 30th is Matthew Hobbs. 31st, and your final driver for the field is Andrew Kerr. And one thing I have noticed, we've got quite a few internationals here tonight, so uh, that's fantastic to see as well. Yeah, you're not wrong, Bernie. It's uh, good for the... For the, uh, for, the, for the series, if we can get some international drives in, it uh, makes our boys push harder and improves the level of racing all round. Uh, I'm a bit surprised to see Matthew Hobbs didn't put in a time. He's a uh, usually a fairly quick driver. He may just feel that he'll sit back there and pick up the, from the carnage. We'll see how we go. Uh, first lap's going to be lively. 
I don't so, know where to look yet, and I'll probably have less clue in a minute. Yeah, well, the revs are rising now, and as one of the viewers said, Hakon's going to eat a Milo sandwich tonight. But uh, here we go, Luke Witten. Timu has got a fantastic start already on the inside of Luke. He's going to try and push him out. Look in the second row, three wide, as they come into turn one, turn two. Hold on to your hats, folks. Hopefully, they're all going to get through here in one piece. Yeah, it looks like Luke's going to hold the outside, and uh, Timu's... I think he's got him. I think I think Luke's managed to hold him out there. He's uh he's done well. Maybe I'll just jump back down the field and see how we're going. Everyone seems to have made it through clean and tidy by looks of things, which is a fine effort for the boys. Uh, just riding with Alex in position nine. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely. I can't see any carnage anywhere. No, it's a good start here. We're riding on the back of Luke Whitten's gearbox cam here. And he's, uh, he's got a bit of a gap over Timu now. But I'll tell you what, it was very close in the first three or four corners here at Oran Park. And uh, now Luke's going to try and step the, uh, the gap up. But let's have a look at our race standings. Top 10, you have Luke Whitten after lap one leading Timu Vascalampi. Let's go into the race, it might help. Luke Whitten leading Timu Vascalapi. Team Tim Gockridge is sitting in second. Tim Hendrickson fourth. Jared Marks fifth. Ian Bevan sixth. Hakon Grebstad, he's sitting in seventh with Russell Clark in eighth. Ryan Walker, he's moved up a position in ninth. And Alex McKellar rounds out your top ten. Yep, yeah, that's about the size of it. Uh... Oh, you can see a big cloud of smoke. Someone's off in the corner, 146. Oh, there's three cars. I think Alex McKellar was one of them. Yeah, it was Alex McKellar and Seymour Harding that went off there. We're going to jump back and see if we can uh, have a look at what exactly happened. Because uh, both of them were in the kitty litter down here. Oh yeah, Seymour has got it crossed up. He's come across the inside of turn two. Oh, and he's just got into the side of Alex there. Alex got a little bit of a T-bone, a couple of hits. And we've also got another one off on the inside. I'm not sure who that was. But they managed to pull it up instead of going across the track. Yeah, that's, uh, that was all very exciting there. Uh, I think Alex was lucky to get out of that with as little damage as he did. Um, just having a look at Seymour's... Um, Helmets, what a, a piece of work there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I reckon uh, Mr. McCullough would have got a very close look at Seymour's helmet there. It, he would have been blindsided by that, I think, Kevin, because he wouldn't have seen him coming. But uh, no, no doubt, he no, he wouldn't have. And no doubt, uh, Alex is streaming tonight, so uh, the viewers watching his stream might have got uh, uh, quite a surprise as well. As I think we can see Alex now coming out of the pits. Let's see if we can pick him up. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is coming out, but someone is. Uh, I don't think it was Alex. Um, Sam's a bit of a mover at the moment. He's got himself up to his 11, which is uh, isn't too bad. I think he started about 14. Yeah, well, as we were saying before, one of the Team Milo cars are off ahead of him. I think that's Ian Bevan. It is Ian Bevan. Sam's pounced on him. He's going to have a dip into the Milo now and takes another position. So uh, Sam's moved into ninth. And as we were saying in the pre-race show, Sam Catacazinos, he's shown a lot of pace here tonight. And uh, he's definitely into the top ten now. Yeah, I'm just looking at Hakon's car. I'd say he's the one who's had contact with Ian. He's, he's got no front on that car and Ian's got some rear wing damage. So... Uh, I'll run back and have a quick look and see if I can find that boot. Yeah, so that's Team Ovaltine struggling now. And uh, while Kevin's looking at that, I'll see if we can find any off-tracks here for Harkon. There was one on lap two, so we'll jump back and have a look at that and see if that was uh, what's caused him to rip the nose off. Possibly is this. Ovaltine in between Team Milo and... Uh, We'll just keep an eye on this to see exactly where he's lost his nose. Yeah, it looks like uh, Ian's got a little untidy there and just slung it across the track and taken it in front of Acorn's car off. Okay, so we'll keep an eye on this. And uh, wow, he got it a bit crossed up there going through turn four. Do you know? Oh, yeah, there it goes. So uh, yeah. it, was, it was almost like the Malachi Crunch if the other uh, Milo car had got into him. Yeah, it would have been. Um, it's uh, it's uh, Ryan 
Walker is um, really putting the pressure on Hagon now. He'll be he'll be losing a bit of speed with that front end gone like that. Yeah, his feet will be cool low, but uh, looking back up front now, Luke Whitten is still leading. He's not getting away from Timu. Tim Gaukrecher also trying to hang on to the two of these, and uh, Tim Hendrickson's dropped off. He's about 1.9 seconds behind this battle pack of three. Yeah, these three at the front are really working hard. I will say I'm, I am uh, rather glad that Hagen's wearing pants tonight, out the front of his car there. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> if you're Scottish, we might be in a bit of trouble, but anyway. We would be. That kill would be flapping in the breeze. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But uh, we're riding down Timu Vascalambi as he comes across the top here. Of course, Timu's from Finland, and, uh, well, he's from the Finland club anyway. 30 laps remaining. You can just see how much you've got to work this track, don't you? Even in a skippy, you're very busy. Yeah, you certainly do. I just noticed that uh, Tim Hendricks has got a bit damage on his front wing which may be slowing him down a bit yeah so I guess uh, damage on the front wing that's going to affect the way the car steers isn't it which could be a big problem around Oran Park yeah it certainly will it also slows your straight line speed down a bit which could account for the fact that he's dropped off these these uh, front front R3 guys yeah, he's definitely dropped back, but uh, no doubt he'll be waiting. I guess they get a fast repair. He can throw that on when he comes in for his mandatory stop at about the halfway point. And I guess until then, all he can do is really hold station. But meanwhile, uh, look at Timu now closing right up. He's really good under brakes, putting pressure on Luke Whitten and uh, trying to make it up to position one. But uh, he's going to have to keep an eye on Tim Gaukridger behind him, though, because uh, Tim is having a look as well yeah these three are having a, having a real a real go here it's uh i think they've they were two tenths faster than tim hendrickson last lap by and uh they're driving 10 tenths all out oh luke he drives so much on the rag here yeah, i don't know how he stays on the track half the time yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Sam Catacazinos, folks, for the fans out there that like uh, Sam, like we all do, uh, up to eighth position, five positions from where he started. He's starting to show his pace. He's a, you know, the pace he showed in practice, he's definitely in the top six fastest. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him up there. The next person he's chasing down is uh, Ryan Walker here, and he's from the UK and Ireland team, uh, club. So it's great to see Ryan over here. Yeah, it is, and Sam is definitely catching him. He's, uh, he's, he's that, uh, nearly half a second quicker that lap around Sam. He's, uh, he's, yeah, he's nailing that turn too, Sam. He's flying right on the back of Ryan there. He's going to have a look down the inside, is he? Oh, it's a brave, brave move, but it can be done. Oh, he's pulled it off easily, nicely. He's on fire. <laughs> he certainly is, and he makes that position up, and now Simon Chambers, he's sitting in with Simon. Well, Simon's had a bit of a moment there dropping a couple of positions. He's down in uh, 12th now. And uh, Ian Bevan's back here in 10th, still battling that uh, bent rear wing. It might be wise for him to tuck in and get an early pit stop and get that tidied up and, and see what he can do from there. Yeah, we're just looking at the replay here. Basically, Sam, uh, Simon ran very wide there and, uh, and uh, cost him a couple of positions. But as you're saying, Ian got uh, a bit crossed up, didn't he, with Hakon. That's why Ian's got a rear wing and uh, Hakon is flapping in the breeze, so to speak, uh, since he lost the whole front nose of that car. Yeah, I don't know what's happened with Ryan. He seems to be well off the pace. That lap was terrible. Yeah, um, Ooh, Roman was point up behind quicker than Luke's gone around. He's, uh, he's pulled oh, it up. No. Yeah, he basically was making a move on trying to go around a car that was a lap down as we come back to the replay and he skidded out into the kitty litter here the cars come out of the pits Luke's been a bit startled locked it up taken a second bite of the brakes swung it out onto the gravel and he's now down in third position oh it's a shame it's a, it's a bit of a difficult pit exit here um, with uh, the way it runs into that first corner there uh, it's, uh, but apparently the um, He's down back into fourth, I think, Bollitzers. Yeah, Luke's in uh, third, but you're right. When they come out of the pits there, they're pretty much on the racing line. And combine that with the awkward turn one, two, as we see now Tim Hendrickson 
Uh, that's Jared Marks there. He gave Jared a bit of a bump, uh, and that's for position. So uh, Jared's getting right over the left, right side there to uh, let these guys through, which he doesn't have to do. He's actually battling for position, but he has uh, he's let those guys through. I think maybe it wasn't Jared. Yes, it was. No. Trying to get a number here. The 54 it is. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm. It's Matthew I'm Hobbs. Can't keep up with who's where at the moment. It looks like Timu's in first place and Timothy in second. Now. So. Yeah. And he's not that far off from either. Yeah. So that was uh, Matthew Hobbs who had some damage there. Had to use his fast repair. So he was the one that uh, Tim was giving him a bit of a bump and. Uh, and uh, Luke had a bit of a surprise with. Now, it's nothing that Matthew's done wrong there at all. He's basically come out of the pits, and uh, as we were saying, it's an awkward pit exit. The guys are coming down there. Well, we'll get a time in a minute, uh, a top speed, but uh, it would have surprised uh, Luke a little bit. Yeah, no doubt it did. It, um, it's a very busy track with these many cars on. It's hard to get track of what's happening, but I see Russell's up to six, then. Uh, and Sam is up to seven, so those boys have a good run. Yeah, so they were they come into that corner at around about 160 kilometres an hour, as we now see further up Timu. Just the car's kicking out a bit, and uh, whenever a racing driver sees that, it is normally an invitation to a party. You're not wrong there. Uh, who have we got behind him there? It's. Uh, Book Roger, he's, um, he's a little bit faster than Timu that lap around, but not much in it. I'm interested in what sort of times Luke's putting in now. He's a yeah. Meanwhile, back here we're having a look at uh, Mick Watson and Darren Lesu here. They went side by side down the main straight. There, Mick got that uh, position up. Mick sitting in 15th, 16th is Darren Lesu. So these two were having a good battle. But just as we got to it, that battle was over. So, uh, you know, there's always battles everywhere. If we look back at Peter Goodwin, he's battling with Seymour Harding here. And this is for 23rd and 24th. Yeah, well, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter where you are when you're racing, is it? But it's all about racing. I see Hakon's been into the pits and got a new front end on that car. I'm sure that'll make him feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's sitting in 20th position at the moment as we're riding with Peter Goodwin here down the back. You can just see him working that wheel and the beautifully presented Red Bull uh, Skip Barber and uh, definitely looking the the, uh, the the goods there. So we see him, this is a hard part, isn't it? Coming over this dip, you're pretty much blindsided. You don't know, you just got to go with muscle memory, don't you, on where that ripple strip is. Yeah, you do, Bernie. You've just got to get the, the car to flow and uh, have it pointed in the right way and just hope it all comes together. It's a very tricky little part of the track, but great fun to drive. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we jumped on Tim Hendricks, and he gets me every time we jump into cockpit cam with his car. <laughs> I, I feel like I need to get a Band-Aid and stick it across the front of his uh, dashboard there. Yeah, I tell you what... Uh, that enough he's put foot down he's into the 112s he's uh really booting he's caught onto the back of a uh, timothy oh hello and someone did hake on again oh no straight yeah. to the back of hake it's not a hake on tonight so he's just having a look he's missing the front wings both wings are off that car he's got a nose but no wings. We're just having a look at the replay to see exactly where he's copped that hit. Yeah, I was into turn two, Bernie. Um, yeah, he's just uh, got clean up going into turn two. Okay. And Alex so. McKellar, he's down in 20th, 20th position, also recovering from that hit he had uh, earlier in the race. The guys that are a lap down and in a bit of trouble out here, Matthew Hobbs, uh, one lap down, 28th. Nathan Kong, uh, he's four positions down in 29th. Mark Jeffrey also finding some trouble and one lap down. And then John Schultz 
uh, as John we just saw coming back onto the circuit. Yeah, meanwhile uh, Luke is all over the back of Timothy. He's, uh, he's decided he's had enough. He's got the boot into it and he's going very hard. He's uh, off a bit there. Oh no, sorry, my mistake. No, he's still, he's right on him. Uh, Luke is um, trying to go get back those positions he lost. He's uh, pulling him in. I don't think he's going to be close enough this time through. Every time. Well, they've got Works a, out. Yeah, there's a car a lap down ahead of them, which may play a part in this, depending where they catch him. I'll tell you what, Luke's car's very loose, but uh, I think he likes it that way, Kevin. Yeah, that's the way Luke drives. I, as I said before, he, he astounds me how he keeps the thing on the on the on the island. To be honest, he's uh, he's that much on the raggedy edge, but he must have outstanding reflexes. And here we go over this blind thing, uh, blind hump. There, you can just see how they have to uh, go on muscle manage muscle memory to sight that corner as he comes down the uh, to start finish straight once again. Yeah, one of the. Uh, one of the uh, viewers knew what I was speaking about on Tim Hendrickson's car and the uh, the the Band-Aid. Yes, it is a nice on board, isn't it? And uh, it's quite interesting that uh, he's leaving little messages there so he knows what he has to do when he goes racing. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, everyone has their little, their little secrets that motivates them through. I'm still sweating on Luke here. He's... Um, this is such a hard track to pass on when you're racing with guys who are fast and, uh, and don't make mistakes. Luke, pretty plenty quick enough, but can he get past Timothy? Meanwhile, I imagine uh, Tim has probably pulled out quite a gap on him. Well, Tim no, Tim has gone into the pits, I'd say. I'm just trying don't. to find him. Um, yeah, he's down in ninth, so eighth. So he hasn't pitted. But he's had some problems so uh, while the guys are looking at this battle I'm going to go back and see if we can work out where Timu came off yeah lap yeah. 13 we had him okay, I'm just having a look at a replay here Kevin and uh, they're down at the cart track side of things and he's in a battle pack I think he's already gone down, so we'll go further back. He's been down there for a while, so we haven't been doing our job very well. No, no, I completely missed that. Um, I've just been watching Luke and uh, Timmy here are sitting in one and two now, thanks to Timmy, who's a bit of bad luck there. Um, if you want to jump in live, I'll see if I can go back and find out what happened to... Um, yeah, to team team. Move. yeah, I've had a look at the off tracks. There's nothing there. He, he's not coming up as uh, pitted, so that's a bit of a mystery. And if he had a pitted, he would have been a lot further down. He's now starting to uh, close in on Roman uh, Saksha, I think it is, trying to make that move. Meanwhile, Sam Katakazinos, he's up into fifth position and moving forwards. But uh, yeah, Timu's got his hands full at the moment as he's trying to get past Roman. Yeah, I can't seem to find out what happened to her. So if any of the viewers have any information on what happened to Timu, just come into our chat channel, let us know, and uh, we'll let all the other viewers know. But at the moment, it is definitely a mystery. He's, uh, he's checked up or slowed up, but it could have been a slowdown, but even then he wouldn't have dropped all the way down to seventh position in the slowdown. So, Bernie... Um, you right there, Kevin? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just catching up with, uh, with the racers. Just having a look at him now. He's all over the back of Roman. I don't think he's going to catch Luke and uh, Tim from here. No, he's not. It's going to come into uh, strategy now, but the thing is, while he's in this battle deeper in the field, that's working to the advantage of Luke and Tim. And... Uh, yeah, because Timu doesn't have any spare track. He's having a good battle though, and he, you know, Roman's doing a great job also uh, in this battle because we know Timu, he can be pretty hungry when he wants to uh, take a position. And Tim Gorkroch has uh, pulled into the pits from the lead of the race. 
Uh, that may release Luke to do a couple of quick laps and maybe undercut him. Just have to wait and see how it happens. Yeah, so we've got 18 laps to go out of 34 as we now see Timu come through to take that position and uh, heavy under brakes. Oh, big crash there. Timu's run in to a person coming out of the pits. We said that earlier. Oh, yeah. That's the 91. It totally rear-ended there and uh, that's the end of Timu's race, unfortunately. We're going to have a look at this. Oh, hey. And uh, just the see... The Les Peck that, that he got. Yeah, it was Les. I'm just seeing what happened. Les wasn't coming out of the pits. Les stepped aside and put on the brakes, and uh, Timu just ran straight up the back of him. Roman got through, but uh, yeah, nasty incident there. Yeah, he slowed down to let. Oh, yeah, just. My, my, over, my screen's gone blank again. Yeah, that was. that was Sam went through and. Uh, I'm not sure team who just didn't quite understand what was happening there. Yeah, because Roman uh, read it and he went on the inside there. He could see Timu going wide. I think what Timu was trying to do was get uh, as wide as he could. And uh, he was a bit surprised there when Les uh, slowed down. But uh, yeah, nasty incident. It does go to show though how tricky that part of the circuit is. As we can see one of the Team Milo boys coming out. Just trying to work out who that is. Jared Marks has just looped it around in turn two. Uh, he's lost a couple of positions. I think that's actually moved Sam up to third. Just uh, great work, Sam. Uh, yeah, I think he's actually might even. Yeah, Sam's in third now. I think. Well done, Sam. Yeah, we're just having a look at this loop. It was a very uh, just threw it out there. Um, uh, breaking into turn two there, and he accelerated, did a bit of a burnout, and continues on. But uh, yeah, Sam Katakazinos, mover of the field at the moment, up nine positions on the podium uh, at the moment. But saying that, a lot of the guys are pitting. So if we look at the uh, pit times, it looks like the faster guys, some of them like Simon or Timu, no, who was it, Timu, 3.5 seconds. But it looks like we're going to be around about the 7.3 to the 8.7 seconds. Some are in the 11.6s. But... Uh, yeah, I reckon if they get it into the sevens or eights, they're pretty much on the uh, the good side of the stops here. Yeah, it, uh, it looks like um, uh, Tim Hendricks has done it into the pitch too. No, sorry, I've got it all wrong there. Oh, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, it's bad. It's Tim, uh, Tim Hendricks is still sitting in second behind Luke there. So it's just Tim who's uh, in between him and Luke. So. Yeah, so looking at your top 10 at the moment, folks, we've got Luke Witten, he's leading. He's got a massive gap, 5.4 seconds back to Tim Hendrickson in second. Sam Katakazinos, he's uh, having a great battle here with Roman for third and fourth. Then we've got Ryan Walker sitting in fifth position, followed by Joseph Falcomada in sixth. Mick Watson, he's sitting in seventh and he's down two from where he started. Matthew Hill, he's in 8th position, up 17 positions from where he started. So keep an eye on Matthew Hill, he's got the pace here tonight. Uh, Paul Nichols, also up 14 positions in ninth, And then Tim Gaukrucher, he's uh, the first of the stoppers. 13.2 seconds was his stop, and uh, he's in 10th. So no doubt he'll be back up there once these uh, pit stops come through. Yeah, no doubt he will. Meanwhile, Luke's still putting in qualifying laps. So he's, uh, he's got yeah, quite a handy gap there, but we'll have to wait and see when, when uh, Mr. Ralk Roger comes out of the pits to see whether it pops him out. Uh, whether he can get in front of Sam or not is the question, I suppose. Yeah, no, Tim's down in 10th uh, position. Roman's just got past uh, Sam, so Roman's now, now up into third and he's uh, starting to get a little bit of a gap on Sam. So uh, 15 laps remaining. We're just over halfway here, folks, of a 34-lap race. Well, we're not really halfway. We will be in another what? No, we are. We're over halfway. We are. Yeah, we're up to 20. So, yeah, Roman's uh, got out with the same sort of little moment or not. I'm not sure. It's uh, a little hard to tell. So his last lap time was fairly tidy. So don't know. I'm not sure what's happened there. 
Yeah, well, we saw uh, Roman was putting the pressure on him, so I'd say he got through cleanly. Now we just saw Tim Gaukrichi here, Matthew Hill, Matthew onto the dirt, and uh, Tim goes through. So uh, tell you what, Tim's not hanging around, and he's now chasing down. I think it's Paul Nichols, and uh, Paul's in that beautifully presented. Uh, looks familiar. What is it? Something to do with yummy food, I think. Uh, is that the ice cream one, is it? Uh, ben and Jerry's? Yeah, Ben and Jerry's. I tell you what, all these liveries are making me hungry. Yeah, it's making me hungry. <laughs> Here we go. That's uh, Tim's just blitz past him there. Yeah, and ran him wide for his troll and ran himself wide. Yeah, no, Tim's, Tim's in a hurry. Yeah, and we've had a retirement, and that is uh, Les Pex retired from the race and uh, from the pits. I had a bit of a chat to him, and he said uh, that he was on the radio at the time telling him to take the inside, and obviously uh, Timu didn't hear that, so uh, he was doing his absolute very best to let them know to uh, to go the inside. So bad luck there to Les. Yeah, uh, maybe Timu didn't have his radio on. Uh yeah, they, yeah, it's quite possible. Yeah, quite a few, I think, do turn off the uh, radio, don't they? And then, um, uh, to, so they can concentrate. But of course, that means that if someone's trying to uh, give them information, they uh, they don't get it, of course. They don't. It's, it's a six of one half and half of the other, isn't it? I, I think my option on the track with this many cars is proud of me to have it on it. Uh, in, in, a, in a league race like this, there's not too many people in there having a conversation, so it's not a problem, really. Yeah, and uh, we're looking down here at 19th. The last person on the lead lap is about to go down as Luke Whitten goes through. That's Rick Davis, and uh, he's up four positions from where he started and uh, having a nice clean run here in that beautifully presented white and lemon uh, paint job. Yeah, two else is having a good run. That's Joseph Falcomato. He's... Uh he started well back down the field and he's uh, up to well, about six or sevens now. Uh, I don't think he's pitted. He's got Timothy behind him, but uh, in about six seconds, so I don't think he can get in the pit. Oh, hello. Someone's locked it up there. Big time, Anthony Moore. And here comes Luke. Oh, look out, Luke. Oh, probably that one's hairy. <laughs> it was also... Uh... Oh, uh... <laughs> All right, go, Bernie. I was going to say, we've had another retirement, folks. Hakon Grebstad's retired. Not sure what's caused that retirement, but uh, I would say it's probably that second hit that we saw him have with the uh, front nose. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's parked that car. But if uh, Hakon can give us more information, we'll definitely pass it over to our viewers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it would have been the 15 minutes re required repairs, Bernie. So. Yeah, well, once you get into that, it's no point, is there, on, on these short races? No, no point at all. You might as well just pack it up and... Uh, and uh, that, um, Timu's thinking in there. He's had a couple of incidents. He's, he's got a... Well, again, um, drivers aren't having such a good night tonight. No, well, Oran Park does sort of do that to you, doesn't it? Some people love this track, but it is a track known to produce a lot of drama, as we've seen in now Timu coming past Rick and uh, taking that position back. But, uh, yeah, it is one of those tracks that's extremely challenging uh, and generally creates chaos. Yeah, it is. It's a very demanding track, as I said, right from the start, both on cars and drivers on it. I learned the track, I did two races, blew me into on both of them and had to go and learn the track again, so <laughs> it can be hard on cars. Yeah, we're just having a look at uh, what's happened to Harkon here. He said something happened to him on lap 11. We're having a look at the replay now just to see what occurred. He's sitting in the pits in bits. Yes. Yeah. I think there's a straight panel on it. The only thing that's anything that's a shape it should be the tyres, I think. Yeah, well, I'm just riding here to see if we can find out exactly where it all went wrong for him. It's looking fine now as he's coming across the start finish line. And uh 
Well, I was looking at it in the pits, it's not so much an oval tin, it's an open tin at the moment. <laughs> an open tin, yeah. She's got no front on it. <laughs> um, please forgive me, but I'm a dad and it was a dad joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ian and uh, Alex are having a ding dong battle here. Ian Bevan and Alex McKellar. Uh, Lisa, you know, uh, Ian's had a bad night, but he's trying to make the best of it. And uh, Alex is saying, well, fine, let's play. He's enjoying himself too. Sitting in 12th and 13th, by the looks of things. Yeah, so a bit, a bit more information there. Uh, Hakon came to grief in the infamous turn one and two section of this track. So that's claimed quite a few big names here tonight, hasn't it? And uh, we've definitely had our fair share of action in that part. I'm sure the uh, spectators, if they're standing down there, they'd be uh, enjoying all the action, that's for sure. I'm sure they would be. It, uh, if you want a souvenir, if you skip barber putts, I'd jump down there up the road. There's bound to be a few lane in this hand trap there. And meanwhile, Alex McKellar has his uh, his uh, mirrors full of Team Milo with Ian Bevan. Both of these guys have stopped. Alex did a 7.3, uh, Ian Bevan a 7.6, and uh, they're pretty much inseparable at the moment. Alex is just getting a bit of a gap, probably about three car lengths. We'll see if Ian can close up on him. Uh, Luke must be in the pits because uh, Roman's in the first and uh, Sam's in the second. Uh, Roman was very lucky to hold that together through turn two there on that lap by, so I'm not sure where Luke is unless he's in the pits. Yeah, well Luke's down here in 17th position just in front of Timu Vascalampi. Tell you what, both of these drivers uh, have had very long stops. Luke Witten stopped 15.4, Timu 16.5. So, uh... They, you know, they both may have got a in pit uh, speeding penalty. It's, very slow pit speed limit here, 31 miles an hour. Uh, very easy to get popped. I actually got done going in and going out in one race. <laughs> uh, bit of a slow learner. But uh, <laughs> it's very easy to get done here for a pit lane. Uh, 15 seconds stop and hold. So, yeah. yeah, that reminds me of my ex wife. She borrowed my car once to go to Sydney and she came in. She got pipped by a speed camera up on the highway there, turned left and got pipped by the other speed camera. So I've got oh, no. two driving infringements in the space of, you know, 10 minutes apart. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that's just... Uh, I know that's not bad luck, but it's uh, bad management, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, well, to, to her defence, it was a very late night. She was driving back from Sydney by herself and uh, I'd say was just fighting to... to uh, to get home as we see now Roman the car stepped out sideways he gathered it up and look at Sam now Sam's got a taste of this these two still have not pitted but uh, let's see if Sam can lead a lap around here tonight not that I've got any favourites uh, Kevin not at all no no none at all no no we, uh, we wouldn't do that Bernie that's a uh, that will be unconscionable behaviour on our part that's uh, the two teams are having a ding dong battle too back there in um uh, fifth and sixth by the looks of things. Yeah, Sam's all over the back of him here. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a little bit loose, Roman. But he seems to have got the better run out of that last corner. Yeah, we, that car stepped out a few times uh, in the last uh, lap. But here we go, back down to the scary turn one and two. There's no cars coming out of the pits. We can see Harkon's car and bits up there. But uh, yeah, Sam just tucks it in. And uh, he's going to—he's placing the car better than Roman at the moment. So, and we know Sam's great under brakes. So that's where I think he's going to make the move. Yeah, he's um. He, yeah, I think he's got Roman a little bit worried here, and so right on the rag. Yeah, that's another thing with this track because it's so tight and um and short. If you get those back tyres hot, it takes a long while to get them cooled down again, and they tend to get a bit slippery. Yeah, I think if Sam can hang with him. He may well catch it, may well um, get him here, but uh, he seems to be very good through there, Roman. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see where these guys come out. Now, Tim Gaukridger, as you were saying, he's been fighting here with Tim Hendrickson, and uh, both these guys stopped. Tim, Tim G, 13.2 uh, second stop. Tim H, a uh, 7.3 second stop. Yeah, so it's... um. Looks like uh, Luke and uh, Timu might have shot themselves in the foot in the pits there, but uh, yeah. have to wait and see. 
yeah, well, they've lost a good um, seven to eight seconds on everyone else that's pitted. So if they want to win this race, they're uh, definitely making it very difficult for themselves because around, oh, there's contact, Timu. In, into the side of which car was that? 17, I think it was. And uh, that was Simon Chambers. No, oh, you can't go hitting Simon. He's no. his league. Exactly right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Seymour Harding's retired too. Just, uh, okay. Uh, no, I'll just jump back and have a look at that with Simon and Team Moon if I can find it. Yeah, there's also been a few other retirements, and we'll jump back and see if we can find this on Simon here. It's just a bit of contact, uh, wheel banging. No, I can't find that. I'm um, having all sorts of trouble with me fast forward and rewind here, Bernie. Yeah, it was basically Simon was uh, running out of track, and uh, he uh, he turned down. To, to get the car onto the track and Timu was there and they just collected wheels. No harm, no foul. But uh, meanwhile up front we've got Sam chasing Roman. Still these guys have to stop now. Tim Gaukridger, he's the first of the stoppers. Interesting, 13.2 seconds was his stop but he's in third position now. Tim Hendrickson, as we said, 7.3 seconds. Paul Nichols still has not stopped. Can see him now coming around in the uh, ice cream Bill and Jerry livery, having a great battle here. It looks like with uh, Ryan Walker, who's uh, moved up six positions. Yeah, there's quite a gap between Roman and Sam, the two Tims. It's around 30 seconds. They could possibly get in and out in that time and still be in front here. Yeah, well, it's 29.2 seconds, and uh, they're leaving their run very, very late, aren't they? Which generally means they should do a very uh, quick stop. They're only going to need, what, five laps of fuel. That's probably, what, a couple of litres? Yeah, if that. If they, yeah, they won't need much at all. But, uh, it's just as long as they don't speed going into pit. Here's Sam coming towards the pit. Now here's Sam's in, and Roman stayed out, so... Uh, Sam come in, let's see if you can get out of there without a penalty. I'll stick with Sam if you want to follow the action there, Bernie. Yeah, and we're going to actually ride with Roman when he comes up to do his stop. Just so you can see how crazy, uh, um, well not crazy, how dangerous that uh, pit, pit entry can be. And of course it's on the racing line, you've got to slow down and then you've got a bit of a... Uh, uh, it's, it's not like a chicane, but a very tight entry, that's for sure. Yeah, Sam's a very tidy pit stop. He's on his way out of the pits now. And uh, yeah, he did what? Uh, I'm not sure where Roman is. So yeah, Roman's up the back end of the circuit. We're riding with him now. He'll probably come in to respond. Uh, Sam came out in fourth position, just in front of, uh, or just behind, uh, Tim Hendrickson. Going, can't find him at the moment. So, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, he's a little bit behind. So, riding now with Roman, and uh, you can see this pit entry right on the pit exit or on the fast line. And it's sort of like they've just opened up a little bit of the cement wall, haven't they? And thought, ah, oh, we'd better put a pit entry in here somewhere. Yeah, that seemed like a little bit of an afterthought. Um, <laughs> I think it's a pit exit that needed more thinking about somewhere. But anyway, that's how it goes. Yeah, well, we're actually going to... Gonna, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kevin. Go You're on. right. You're right. Go, Bernie. I was going to say, we're actually going to stay with Roman here and we're going to jump on the gearbox cam as he comes out just to show people when they come out of these pits, they're on the racing line and look at the speed difference. You can see now and look at the car just sweep past him. I think that was Luke Whitten, but uh, no, it wasn't. Who was that? That was Sam Catacazinos. Is that Sam? Yeah, it was Sam. Yeah, Sam got him in the pit. So I'll say Sam did have a very tidy pit stop. So he's, uh, he's done well there. Yeah, well, they both uh, had the exact same time, 7.4 seconds each. Uh, Tim Hendrickson was 7.3. But you can see Roman's car absolutely loose in the back end there. He just gathers it up. And, of course, they don't throw tyres on these. So, uh, you know, for these this race, so it's not a problem of cold tyres, I don't think. No, just to, just trying too hard, I think, is... Uh, 
needs to just settle himself down and uh, get stuck in. There's still a bit of time. I don't know, there's only a couple of laps left here. Yeah, so... Then, that's got Sam in first place on my calculations as they cross the line with uh, two to go. Uh, we've got Tim Gowcridge leading, Tim Hendrickson second. Uh, sorry, my mistake. And then uh, Sam's behind them. So there's a battle going on. They're separated by eight tenths of a second. Sam is about five seconds down and he's fighting with Roman here for the last step of the podium so that's your top four folks Ryan Walker great drive by him he's up to fifth and uh, he's moved six positions up he's got Jared Marks right behind we haven't seen much of Jared tonight but he's definitely having a great battle and then of course uh, Alex is now sitting in seventh and he's fighting it out with Ian Bevan and Ian looks yeah, like he's just had a, an off Oh, it's been a good recovery for Ian and a great drive by Alex. Um, you know, car up to seventh is a fine effort. Yeah, so here's a quiz for you. Where did Ian Bevan come to grief? Early on in the piece, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. No, that lap. Where? What part oh. of the track did he just come to grief? I'll Don't give, give me any quizzes, Sam. I my brain stuck, uh, mate. It's easy, just think of where everyone else has uh, crashed tonight. Turn two, would it be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Turn two. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. So we're down to the final lap here now. So Tim Gowcridge is leading Tim Hendrickson. They've got quite a bit of a gap. Sam Catacazinos, Roman is still battling here. Roman's closing in, but Sam's got about a two-second gap. Then we've got Ryan Walker now. Jared Marks on the inside into turn one, two. And uh, that pushes Ryan out. And uh, he's had to uh, take evasive action there. So he's lost that position. Then we've got Alex McKellar, Ian Bevan, of course, spread out. But let's jump back to the leaders as we've got half a lap to go here. And it looks like Kevin, Tim Gowkridge is going to take this win. Well, Tim's definitely going to be in for second year, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, considering he had one of the slowest stops, 13.2 seconds, and he's leading this race, uh, he must have been putting in some pretty outstanding, consistent laps tonight. He's been driving very well. There has been a fair bit of mayhem through the field, but that's that's racing at Oran Park. You know, you, like the fortune, you take it where you get it, and uh, he looks pretty happy there. He's got the end zone wiggle going, and away he goes. Well done. Um, Well, and Sam Catacazinos held out Roman for that position. Now uh, down to fifth, Jared Marks comes home ahead of Ryan Walker. Then, uh, of course, we've got Alex McKellar coming through now to finish in seventh. Good recovery drive by him. Ian Bevan, Team Milo, home in eighth. Peter Goodwin will come across the line in ninth with Mick Watson just beating out Ashley Work there. Well, no, that was a car lap down. Where's Timmy? Timmy came in 12th apparently. With Luke in 13th. Luke in 13th. Uh, Joe, Joseph Falcon at 14th. Simon Chambers 15th. Rick Davis 16th. Russell Clark, uh, unfortunately, after a promising start, down to 17th. Uh, Paul Nichols in 18th. Matthew Hobbs 19th. And Darren Lazur rounds out the top 20. Yeah, so Matthew managed to get back on the lead lap because he went down a, a lap and uh, I think Darren did as well. So that was pretty good. You don't see that often in the skippies. And uh, of course, Rob James comes across the last on the lead lap here. Uh, he lost three positions, but he came home in 21st. So uh, not a bad drive from him. No, no, in this field, that's, you know, that's a pretty good result. I'd be happy with that. So, shame to see uh, Hakon retire out of the race, but... Uh like I said, that thing wasn't so much an oval tune as an open tin. Had the front ripped off it twice here tonight. Like I said, good thing is wearing pants. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's speak and see more. Well, uh, yeah, a bit more information. Uh, Hakon came to grief, turn one and two. Um, around about lap 11, he said, he came together with uh, Brian Munger, who was re-entering the track at that area, which is... Uh, what's happened there so he didn't have any fast repairs left 
uh, to repair that car. But uh, I tell you what, Sam's had a great run. We said earlier in the show that uh, he had the pace. He's definitely showed it. He's got a podium tonight, so uh, he's going to be celebrating under that big bushy beard of his. Yeah, well done, Sam. It's a great effort. I was just seeing here that uh, Mr. Gork Rogers uh, reckons he had a long stop. He <laughs> put in too much fuel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just you cry me a river, Tim. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. He he did one of the slower stops, thirteen point two seconds compared to seven point three. Yeah. Yet he still won the race. So he must have been very very consistent out there um, during the laps to recover from that. Because the others we saw was uh, Luke Witten team in Vascalampi, fifteen point four seconds, sixteen point five seconds. They came in twelfth yeah. uh, and thirteenth. Of course, Timu, he had to use a fast repair, and I'm not sure what happened to Luke. No, uh, Luke, um, I come to grief there a couple of times. I think it uh, was, um, as I say, racing at Oran Park. You know, it's it's difficult, especially with that pit exit. When you have pit stops here in such a big field, there's cars going every which way. And that, yeah, um, uh, came to grief with uh, the car that called them through, wasn't it? Um, I forget who it yeah, was. Yeah, Les, called Les them through and It was Les, yep. Yeah, Timu just didn't, either didn't have his radio on or got confused or, or missed the um, radio. And uh, unfortunately, shot himself in the foot there. Uh, I'm sorry. Thing and unfortunately it uh, hasn't worked for Yeah, I was just uh, giving a shout out there to Willie OD in uh, the chat channel there. He's saying he's learning the skippies at the moment. He's done four races and uh, he's also learning Oran Park at the same time. So that's a pretty big uh, thing to learn, isn't it? Oran Park and a new car. But uh, he said he's liking it, so that's fantastic. And I was just telling him about how good and friendly you guys are, Kevin. Yeah, 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 we're a friendly bunch of your bathers next week if you like learning and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's giving himself a hard job there with Oran Park this week and Bathurst next week. It's a, it, yeah, it's a bit of a Mr. T, that one. Pity to fill it up. But, uh, a good luck to him if he can make it work. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, get in touch uh, with the Australian... Uh, uh, skip barber community if uh, you want to race with those guys they race pretty much it all through the week nice bunch of guys they race hard they play hard but they also uh, know how to have some fun as well so that's great but let's go through our final positions here uh, so Tim Gowcritcher takes the win uh, tonight from Tim Hendrickson in second I'm going to start calling Tim Gowcritcher Houdini because I don't know how he pulled that off with such a long pit stop Tim Hendrickson second Sam Catter Casinos up 10 positions to come home in third. Roman Saksha uh, home in fourth, also up 10 positions. Uh, Jared Marks, he comes home in fifth with Ryan Walker finishing in sixth and up five positions. Alex McCullough settled for seventh in the end, up three positions. Ian Bevan dropped one to come home in eighth. Peter Goodwin, he comes home in ninth, followed by Mick Watson in tenth. In eleventh was Ashley Work, and then we had Timu Vascalampi. He's, um, oh, I've lost my button. Where's my button? Have you stolen my button again? No, I found it. Uh, in twelfth position, down ten. Come with me, Bernie. I'm a zipper man. Okay. Uh, you, did you want to read out the next uh, yeah. from 13 to yeah. 24th? 13 is Luke Witten, too, surprisingly. Yeah, bad luck to Luke if you don't deny it at all. Joseph Falcomo for 14. Simon D. Chambers, 15. 15. Russell Clark, uh, not a good run for Russell in 17. Paul Nichols, 18. Matthew Hobbs, 2 to 19. Uh, then we have Darren Lister, 20th. 21st was. Rob James Harris, the last driver on the lead lap. One lap down, we have on 22, Andrew Kerr. 23 is Matthew Hill. 25 is Mark Jeffrey. Two laps down in 26 was Matthew Kong. Uh, 27, Brian Munger. 28, Anthony Moore. Then we're into retirements with uh, Seymour Harding. Seven laps down. Poor old Hayek on a terrible night. 17 laps down. And let's pick 18 laps down. Yeah, and your microphone's playing up. Yeah, your microphone's oh, playing up. 
<laughs> That's all right. No, it's just cutting in and out. But uh, the biggest shaker tonight looks like that was Huck on uh, down 22 positions from where he started due to that incident. The biggest mover tonight. Uh, that's a lot closer. That looks like that might have gone to Matthew Hobbs uh, up 11 positions, finishing in 19th. And uh, yeah, he's the biggest mover tonight by one. Pick Matthew to be uh, to get up the field. Uh, he only got the one qualifying lap, and then he is quite a tidy driver. Yeah, definitely. Now we've got a couple of guys down there in the green room waiting to come up. I'm thinking, uh, what should we do? Bring Ian up first or Mr. McCaller up first? Ah, uh, I'm not fussed, but you bring up the web you. Bring them both. Oh, I'm a friendly sort of a bloke. Hmm, okay. You're a friendly sort of a bloke, did you say? Yeah, that's what they tell me. <laughs> Let's bring Alex up quickly. We'll have a chat with him then, Ian. Yeah, nice. Hey, Alex, can we butt into your stream, mate? Yeah, of course. Hang on. I'll just... Uh, all right, I can... I'll you guys out. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I can throw you out and I'll go and get Ian, Ian <laughs> in. <laughs> no, it's good, mate. No, great, happy to be here. What a great race, eh? Yeah, it was pretty awesome. And, uh, of course, welcome to the Double RTV Combox. Got to get a plug in there on your stream. But, uh, yeah, interesting, interesting races. And uh, we saw you coming together earlier on it looked like you got away with it fairly easily but uh did, did you actually see him coming across the track at you look I, I had a glimpse it was uh seymour harding from memory i had a glimpse of him uh uh losing it on the on the in, on the approach into turn two there and i could see him sideways and i knew what tends to happen there is you end up going across the middle of the apex but um i thought i'd left enough room for him to because you tend to sort of plant uh, on the inside, but I didn't. And then uh, we had a, a little bit of a coming together, a bit of understeer, so I pitted as soon as I could take fuel. But um, uh, nah, all, all things considered, I was back in like 28th spot, um, and when the pit stop sh shook out, I ended up a lot better, so I was pretty happy with the run in the end. Yeah, it was a fantastic run, and the pit stops did shake up the field a lot, a lot more than we normally do. A lot of shuffling up and down, which made it very interesting indeed. And of course, uh, it would have been very interesting for your viewers on, from your point of view, especially around Oran Park. Hopefully you didn't uh, swear, but uh, the question is, <laughs> have you plaited your beard yet? Remember no, we were talking I about yet. this? I'll, I'll have to do a special pirate stream, right? Just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Flat it up, uh, Gimli style. From uh, I, don't, I don't think I quite have the Lord of the Rings beard quite yet. But. <laughs> it put a patch <laughs> on one eye. Yeah, that's right. No, I managed to uh, uh, keep the blue language at bay. But uh, one of my viewers did, and he did comment that it was hard work watching it, let alone driving it. So uh, <laughs> it was it was pretty action packed. Yeah, it certainly was. And of course, Tim Hendrickson caught me out again. One of the viewers commented on his beautiful writing there. And I was saying, we need to get a Band-Aid and stick it across that part. But it's all fun and games. Yeah, I forgot to put a message in the crossfire this week. Uh, I'll have to do that for next time. But uh, yeah, he, he can catch you out if you go on the gyro with him, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. It, it's worth a giggle, but it's not G-rated. Of course, uh, Alex, it, it was a hot day out there today. And can you tell the viewers a little bit about how uh, the skippy goes on those hot days and how it's affected? Yeah, look here with the undulations, and uh, of course these are on road tyres. The undulations here unweight the the uh, suspension a bit, so you you, you could consider much like last week at VIR, uh, dropping your anti roll bar to get a bit softness in, in the rear, so that uh, you get a bit of grip. But uh, a lot of it's about managing the sliding and and using it to your best advantage around here because you do need to rotate the cars. These things tend to have a bit of understeer, particularly on acceleration. So if you can get the rotation done early and use, really use the track to your advantage, that's that's where the biggest gains are to be had. So it's a really great car to learn car control in. And this track, I'll tell you what, you've got to have every bit of it, particularly through turns one and two. Um, so you would have seen, I haven't gone back and watched it yet, but you would have seen a lot of cars come unstuck on the outside of turn one on the approach to turn two tonight. And all that is, is that rear of the car becoming unweighted and the back stepping out and you just, you just got to take your medicine at that point. Great, great car to learn on, great track to learn on here as well, Bernie. 
Yeah, it certainly is. And we had one viewer watching that's just getting into the skippy. So uh, he was uh, watching you guys in action. But of course, folks, this is Alex McCullough from the Top Split. He streams live on Twitch TV forward slash Top Split TV. If his voice sounds familiar, that's because old Alex comes and joins me every <laughs> Monday night calling the Monday Night Lights. Yeah, so we'll be back big and big and bright tomorrow, uh, of course, from this same track, and uh, and I've got your uh, your coverage up on my stream at the moment while we're having our conversation. So uh, it's it's good. Uh, I heard you talking about the the Skippy community here in the ANZ Club and more broadly, and uh, you know that's what it's all about: cross promotion, building up the community. It's a great bunch to be a part of. So bigger and better things from here, Bernie. Definitely, and that's what we're both all about, isn't it? Is building up the community, and uh, that's why we do what we do. But of course, I've got, uh, uh, I was going to say Mr. Gigglepot with me, Mr. Kevin Henderson, but he hasn't really been giggling that much tonight. <laughs> I haven't had time, Bernie. It's been too busy. Alex, 24th of September, mate, international talk like a pirate day. That's a day to do your beard. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. I'll have to do something special for the occasion. My daughter's good with, with hair and braids and things, so I'll have to get her on the job. Yeah, that's the way you go, the old Jack Sparrow, mate. You'll be right. <laughs> Perhaps you could um, get a new paint job for it too. Oh, there's an Maybe idea. A, Start with a yeah, paint some right. cannons on the side. <laughs> oh, even better. <laughs> Use them tonight, mate. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. The lap traffic was pretty good, to be fair. A uh, couple of times we got held up here and there, but it's a tough place to do anything other than just pull over, right? So, no, it was it was good. The, the guys out there did really, really well. Great community and a great community effort to get, you know, what was it, 30, 31 cars around here, you know, at all, let alone somewhat safely, right? Okay. Yeah, great driving. Something here from our viewers, and I'm sure your viewers will agree. AJ Racing has said, that's Alex John, of course, your good friend yes. there. Yes. He's telling you to dye your beard orange. Tim Hendricks. Orange. Yeah, and they're oh. going, yeah, do it, do it. So you've got to dye your beard orange. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I reckon that you'll be on to something then. Well, I'm a kid. Sorry. So, I was just going to say, oh, I can see a fundraiser here for the uh, RRTV GoFundMe campaign. Uh, <laughs> the biggest biggest donator gets to decide what Alex does with his beard. Oh, dear. Don't let my wife know. <laughs> she'll, she'll donate a moth of my own cash to me to cut it off. <laughs> okay, folks. So, this is what we're going to do. If you donate money... <laughs> Alex is going to shave his beard off and no, he's colour not. his no, he's hair not. orange. There's a purple hair dye in the house for my girls, so maybe that's something we can think about. <laughs> okay, we'll, I we'll think, hold I, think, I think we should um, put some little um, beads and stuff in it, mate, and maybe a few bird beaks. Oh, mate, that, those things I can find just lying around the house would be sweet ass, right? Yeah, shotgun shells <laughs> and that. That'd be good. <laughs> okay, anyway, guys, we've got to finish up this interview because it's getting a bit mental and I've got uh, Simon Chambers down, which I'd really like to have a chat with him because this is the last time we're covering this race this season. Of course, next uh, round, Alex, it's over to you guys to uh, to call the final race here of the Australasian Super Skips. Yeah, it'll be a good one. We're coming from, I think it's a night race at uh, Daytona. So looking forward to that one immensely. I wish I could be out there. But uh, just second best, of course, is, is up in the booth calling the action for the guys. Yeah, it should be very good. And we've really enjoyed calling the Australasian Super Skips. But uh, we've got Simon Chambers in the com box with us now. Hi, Simon. We saw you having a bit of a rub coming together there with Timu. Looked like you lived for another day. But I'll tell you what, you had a very good... Uh, showing of drivers tonight and uh, you must be very happy with that uh, from a a um, organizer's point of view yeah g'day guys how's it going um yeah it was great over 30 is really good um uh, very small track it was quite crowded out there you couldn't get too much room um but uh timu was probably partly my fault i sort of jinked to the right a little bit and was a little slow um, letting Luke through. Yeah, so uh, it looked pretty action packed out there. From your point of view, is that what you experienced? Oh, yeah, definitely. There were um, some cars having a bit of trouble in turn one, as always. And uh, yeah, a couple of guys going sideways that I had to avoid. Um, plenty of guys diving in and out of the pits. Um, 
always a real worry here. It's uh, both the entrance and the exit are really um, are really tight, and you've got to be careful. Yeah, you certainly do. We we're pointing that out. Uh, on the entry, you're pretty much coming off the racing line. You've got that really awkward entry. It's almost like they uh, they just made a, a, a bit of a gap in the concrete to let cars in. And of course, on the exit, you're coming out there blind straight onto the racing line. And the difference in speed is phenomenal. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of action down that end of the track. But I'm going to hand you over to Kevin because uh, we've got Kevin Henderson here. He'll... Uh, He'll have some more questions for you. Yeah, good evening, Simon. Uh, pretty good result, mate. Uh, it's a very good race, I must admit. The, the boys put on a good show tonight. Uh, it was hectic up here in the comm box. Uh, we didn't know where to look. There was so much happening. Uh, but most of all, it seemed pretty tidy. And uh, a good, good, uh, good bunch of boys out there tonight. Yeah, I saw a few guys a bit out of position. Um, Luke seemed to drop back. Um, I think he had to stop twice. And uh, we had... Um, Russell Clark probably struggling as well. I ended up in front of him, and I saw, I saw a few guys uh, in front of me or, or behind me catching me that uh, probably should have been nowhere near me. Yeah, no, it was it was very um, it's a it's a difficult track with a lot of with a lot of traffic on it. Uh, people were making a few mistakes. That's only to be expected. But I thought overall the standard of driving was was pretty good. So I mean, uh, you've got yourself a good little uh, championship running here. You must be pretty proud of it. Oh yeah, it's really great to see all the guys looking forward to it and um, turning up. Um, yeah, um, just uh, yeah, we'll keep going and we'll come around again for another season um, in in four. I think it's four weeks away, but uh, we've got the last race coming up in two weeks, and we're at Daytona uh, at night. The road course. Yeah, I'll have to buy the track. I don't even have a Daytona track, but um. I'll be in the com box. So I'll have to get the track. Uh, yeah, it's it's good to see that uh, with the league like this, you know, that it doesn't matter what level you drive at, uh, you get out there and have some fun and race guys in your own uh, in, around your own ability and, and speed. It, uh, it it's it's often the sort of racing that's hard to get just in the open series. Yep, that's right. Yep. So maybe I should remind everyone. Sorry, <laughs> I should remind everyone that. Um, it, they will need to get Daytona International Speedway for the next race, and it's the pay version. There's also a free one, but it's not the free version. Yes, that's a new the new circuit layout, isn't it? Because the classic, I think, is the free version. Yeah, that's right. The one that's free is called Daytona Circuit 2007, but we are on the one that's Daytona International Speedway, and we've had a trial race there back before the first season. Um, a couple of trial races actually, and um, they were really good. We only had a few cars, but they were they were um, really good, and it suits the car very well, and they look nice under the lights. Yeah, well, it'll look pretty nice, that's for sure. And I guess it'll look even better when all the boys uh, strap torches to their helmets. <laughs> Thankfully, the flood lighting is uh, is quite good. Yeah, and we've got uh, some uh, Ryan Walker in the. Uh, chat room just asking if we can give him the link to discord i don't know how to do that so i'm not sure kevin if you can do that or simon and uh if he goes if he goes into the for racing forum and the monday night lights on the first post there's a link there okay no worries well maybe next time we'll uh, bring him up and have a chat of course uh, ryan came home in uh fifth position so he did a really good uh, race that's for sure but anyway simon it's been great chatting to you both on from the driver's point of view the series organizer point of view and uh i think when you look back on tonight's race you're going to see some uh lots of action and uh oran park definitely delivered that in spades tonight but before we let you go do you want to give a shout out to all your sponsors and uh everyone else that's helped you with the series and with uh with your car tonight oh definitely there's there's too many to mention <laughs> all the usual guys um uh yourselves uh alex mckellar luke Witten, the main guys russell clark as well with graphics um a lot of people have been putting things together for me. Ian Bevan, um, even Ed Levi. Yeah, <laughs> it, it goes on and on. Fantastic. Well, anyway, 
It was great uh, seeing all the action here at Oran Park with Kevin by my side and uh, Kevin did behave himself most of the time and uh, yeah it was great fun so anyway Simon thanks for popping in it's time for us to start wrapping up the broadcast because I think the F1s are pretty much on and I want to watch a race <laughs> yeah I've started taping it uh, okay yeah, me too uh, I don't have the I don't have that modern Fandango thing but anyway yeah uh, Kevin. What do you mean, Martin? I'm taping it on a VHS, mate. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, joking. <laughs> no, that's all right. Kevin, before we go, mate, uh, any final thoughts on uh, tonight's race? Uh, yeah, Boney, um, just, you know, shout out to all the boys. It's great to see him turn up and race so clean and tidy. And it's good for, for our club, the Australian New Zealand club, to have a uh, race like this. Uh, we don't get the opportunity to race in leagues very much because they're usually not in our time scale. And it, it's great of Simon, you know, to put the work in and get it up for us all. And you too, Bernie, and RRTV. And uh, everyone jump on the RRTV Go Family page. And let's keep this great service for the community run. Yeah, and the uh, GoFundMe, it's starting to reach its goal and I reckon we'll uh, have some exciting news for you all next week. And we're still raising money though, so you can go over to gofundme.com forward slash double RTV live, or if you prefer, you can go to the PayPal page, and that's uh, paypal.me forward slash double RTV live. So, uh, yeah, that'll be going probably for the rest of the week, and then uh, we'll be mentioning a few things to the community which i'm sure the community will love but of course tomorrow night folks uh we have the monday light night lights back again alex McKellar will be joining me in the booth 9 15 p.m tomorrow night it's fantastic if you haven't seen it before come and join us we're generally in the top two top three uh splits in the world for that week in strength of field so uh and we're getting a lot of internationals coming down to uh, mix it with of course a lot of our fantastic local community here on uh, Skip Barber Monday Lights but of course you've been watching the Australasian Super Skips which is uh, the leading league for Skip Barbers in Australia and uh, we're starting to see some internationals come here as well and it's been a fantastic season if you haven't caught all the races go to our YouTube channel and uh, you can see all the replays and uh, catch up with all the action then but until then uh, Kevin thanks for calling the race with me mate no doubt we're going to see you in action tomorrow night you looked very racy last week have you been uh, eating your wheat bix uh, for tomorrow night yeah Bernie I'm keen uh, like I said I want my third position on the uh, championship back uh, and so I'll just have to get in there and hopefully have a nice tidy race uh, without too many incidents fantastic now uh I've got to do one last thing before we go and uh, God I'm having a disorganised night I'm going to blame you tonight for this okay Kevin that's fine that's what my wife does all the time but <laughs> oh dearie me okay folks well it's been a pleasure calling the race with you and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have bringing it to you have a safe Monday return to work tomorrow good people and hopefully you'll join us tomorrow night so on behalf of Kevin Henderson, I'm Bernie Weemers. Thanks for watching Double R TV, and we look forward to your company again very, very shortly. Good night.